But I think what's really interesting, Guy, is that the company that you started is mm. now a company that sells food throughout South Africa. Nationally, and it, yeah. It's national mm. um, and has done very well mm. on the diets that you actually... That we, um, that we yeah, played around the with in the beginning. That you played around with. Exactly, then. exactly. But there's also um, the point of view of our um, audience is a national, uh, is an international, international one, exactly. So, what are your um, kind of? How would you advise people? Because they can't always get hold of the mm. food you're suggesting. Mm. How would you go about advising them on how to use the information that we're going to bring them? Um, well, one thing I'd suggest, and it applies to all horse disciplines. It's um, you know if, whether you're bringing on a polo pony or a show jumper or a dressage prospect. Um, you want a horse to be sensible so that you can school it for and actually train it for 90% of the lesson and not, not vice versa, not have a horse that you're spending 90% of your time working it down, quietening it to a point where it can actually, um, Concentrate on to what actually focus on what you're trying to teach it. Mm. Um, and that was basically coming back to a, a grain-free diet. And, and I, I, I advocate that that applies to just about every horse discipline other than racing. Racing, obviously you need fuel for a horse. It's got to, it's got to be the fastest horse from point A to point, point B. Um, and no matter how crazy it is, you know, in the warm up arena or what have you, in, in practically all other horse disciplines, you're wanting a quiet horse, but that's looking good. Um, with that long, slow release type of energy, which comes from your grain free diet. So what I would recommend to people is to, go and source their, their local uh, commercial horse feed, talk to the nutritionist, um, find out what's going into those foods and try most uh, commercial brands nowadays have a grain free ration, which is focused on high fiber, high fat content, um, high protein, and don't be scared of protein. You know, protein is needed for, for, for muscle building in horses and to keep that condition. And Some people should actually get hold of their own local... I would say so, um, because to, to, I think it's quite dangerous to start too much formulating your own food if you don't know what you're doing. Um, there's a lot of input into balancing a ration, making sure that the salt level isn't too high or too low, uh, the calcium phosphorus ratio is balanced. So. Um, but talk to your local feed rep and, and certainly get a, get a food that is not high in energy um, but, uh, and particularly energy that comes from grains like maize and oats and that. Um, until your horse is at that level where it's performing at a, high, at, at a high end. I mean we're talking about bringing on young horses um, with often with, with new um, new equestrians into the sport in that. So you've got a, a, you've got a new rider, young horses. And a new source of food. And the last thing you want is, and I mean, somebody came up with that. If you want, uh, if you want to go drag racing, you know, you, uh, with your horse, you know, give it rocket fuel. And, and unfortunately that's what comes with feeding maize and, and oats and that, um, is, is a high, high energy diet. You're going to end up with a high energy animal, you know.